What is going on guys? Welcome back. This is video number 16 in my series on making a mobile game with JavaScript. Now today I was having a little trouble thinking about what we were going to talk about because we kind of got to the point where, you know, we got our nice smooth animations around our universe and so I was wondering what I should talk about next. And so for this video I actually decided to jump into some of the database stuff because that is really important because obviously we don't want a different system generating every time the player opens the game. We just want one system to generate when they first open the game and then for it to stay that way, you know, every other time they open it. And if you're wondering why my uh, JavaScript page here looks like it has nothing on it, it's because, you know, I have all my uh, objects and functions that we made just minimized here, but you can just open them up. If you're using brackets, um, you know, you can minimize everything, but it just looks cleaner this way. So what we're gonna do is actually at the top above everything else, we're just going to write a new function called init db. And it's not going to take any parameters. And right above this function, we're actually going to define a new variable called db. And we're not going to initialize it to anything. It stands for database. So now inside the init db function, we're actually going to define this db variable. So we're going to set it db equal to window.openDatabase. An open database is actually a function that's going to take four parameters for us. The first one is basically a short name. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what you name these databases because we're only going to be making one, so we don't really need to be referencing them by name. So I'm just going to write database, just generic. And then the next parameter in here is going to actually be the version of the database. And this is something you can actually change as you go along if you'd like. But for now, I'm just going to put in 1.0. And then the next part is another name, which is actually the display name for your database. And I'm just going to call it, you know, the name of our game, which is app game right now. The last piece is actually probably the most important piece, which is the storage that you're going to initialize this database with. So for now, I'm just going to do 209.7152. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you evaluate two megabytes, that's actually exactly how many bytes it is for megabytes, because this is in bytes. And honestly, I'm not sure how much storage the game actually takes up. I'm not sure how to find that information. If anyone knows, feel free to leave it down below. Um, but for this, I found that two megabytes, I've had no problem. And you know, I've done a lot more in this game and I have a lot of stuff being saved into the database and I haven't had any problems with running out of storage. So two megs should be, plenty and you know phones have like gigs now so it's not even a big deal so now that this db is initialized to a database database actually has functions that we can call and one of the most important ones that we use frequently is db dot trans transaction and transaction essentially i mean it's exactly what it sounds like it just means that you're going to be interacting with the database in some way so right below that we're going to create a function called create tb and we're going to make another one more function under that called error cb and now what tb stands for is table so what we're going to do is this function essentially is going to create our tables and then this error cb is actually callback error callback so that we can pass in that function and you know if there's problems doing a transaction with the database, it'll pass us in our callback and tell us what the error was. So then inside of this now, what we want to do is we want to call that create TB. And then the next thing in here is the error CB. So what it does is these two parameters, if there's something, so it'll call this function. And if there's something goes wrong with the transaction, it'll call the error and pass in whatever callback the error was. So now jumping inside of our create TB, um, actually this is going to take one property called, and we're just gonna call it TX. And this TX is actually an object. And the function that we're going to be accessing inside this object is actually called execute SQL. And if you don't know what SQL means, it actually stands for structured query language. And essentially it's just a way for us to interact with the database. So now this execute SQL function here actually takes one property and that's a string and this string is actually going to be our SQL statement 
So what we want to write in here is actually create table if not exists. And we write that basically that will initialize the table on the first time the game is opened, but then any time after that it won't create it again because we already have it. So now what we do after that is we give our table a name. So in this case we'll call it star systems because we want those star systems to save into the database because we need that information. So the next piece of this SQL is actually we're going to do parentheses and then inside of this is where you list all the properties, all the rows essentially in the database that you want to be saved. So the first one, obviously there's three properties we have right now being generated. We have an X, Y, and a radius. So we're going to do coord X, coord Y, and radius separated by commas. So now what this did is it created a new table in our database called star systems with three rows that we can fill you know with as many star systems as we need and that's the only table we actually need to build right now but for any other tables you can follow the exact same thing you can make as many as you want inside of this create TB you know you could duplicate this line a bunch of times and change the names and whatever you pass in and you'll have all these different tables to store different information the next part we're just gonna put this in just in case there are errors and when this error CB is actually called, a number here is passed in. And so what we want to do is we can just do an alert ERR. And so what will happen is if there are any errors for any reason, you'll get an alert on your device. And it will pop up with a number now. And what you need to do is the number is associated with the error code. And so if you do a search for SQLite error codes, and I'll leave a link actually in the description so if there are any problems you can follow that link and you can see what the number is associated with. And so that's actually all we're gonna do with the database for today. Um, we're not actually calling the init DB yet. There's actually a few more things we need to do before we call that. We need to do some restructuring. But as an added bonus for this video, I did add two new images into the Google Drive folder, images folder. And I will leave a link to straight to that images folder in the description. And if you see over here, actually, inside of our images folder right here, you'll see that there's a background SVG and a sun SVG. And I'm not gonna talk too much about what an SVG is right now, just know that you can use it essentially the same way you use an image. For now, what we're gonna do is jump into the CSS real quick. We can jump over here into the universe and we'll actually write background image and we'll set that to URL dot dot images and then background. And just one more thing for this to make sure it's the right size, just set background size equal to cover. And that'll make sure that this covers the screen. And now what we can do is actually jump into the systems class and where we were doing our white background, we can actually get rid of this now. And we'll actually put in a background image URL and we'll get into the images folder and grab that sun. And also you can delete this color now because we're not going to be using the color on the, on the universe. And now again, inside of this, we're going to add a couple more properties. We want to center this in the middle. We want to the size we can cover and also we don't want any repeating of the background and now if you go ahead and test this you'll actually see what you see above me which is you know our suns on our new background and it looks way better than it did before with just the plain blue and white and so you know there's no stars yet but you know if you want stars you can go ahead and you know they're easy to make so you know you can throw those together if you have like Photoshop or something or find an image online you know and download it and throw it in there and see how it looks but that will wrap up video number 16 guys and I'm so glad that you're following along so far and enjoying this series and make sure to subscribe if you haven't like my video and I will see you guys in 17 see ya